Testing, testing, one, two, testing, testing. Testing, testing, one, two,
Senior Basketball Matchup featuring the visiting Halifax West Warriors versus your very own Andre Offspring. Before we begin, the land acknowledgments. Arbor Academy is located on the unceded and ancestral land of the Mi'kmaq First Nations people. Mi'kmaq is still home to many Mi'kmaq peoples, the original caretakers of this land. We are all treaty peoples. We also recognize that African Nova Scotians are a distinct people whose histories, legacies, and contributions have enriched that part of Mi'kmaq known as Nova Scotia for over 400 years. And now, your starting lineups for the visiting team, Halifax West Warriors. Number four, Ava Parker. Number seven, Maria Devignal. Number eight, Lyric Rebe. Number 11, Ali McLean. And number 13, Olivia And now, the starting lineup for your Andre Offspring! <laughs> Number 10, Alvin Thunder! <laughs> Number 12, Nadia O'Keefe! <laughs> Number 9, Lily Franchard! <laughs> Number 7, Sasha Nina <laughs> Battle, Armbre Ospreys taking on the Halifax West Warriors. Regular season action. I am John Tramble on the call with the one and only Leslie States. How are we doing, Leslie? Hey, it's a great day to be in the basketball court, that's for sure. I'm doing great. So we are starting off here um, for Armbre's first home game of the season. And they're playing Halifax West, which is a strong contender this year. Uh, Halifax West is 2-1 in league play right now, and Armbray is 1-1. Really, one one? Yeah, uh, one Armbray, yeah, the last game lost to C.P. Allen, so they're looking for their, their first uh, big win at home here, but they're going to have a tough tough goal against the Halifax West Warriors. They are, uh, and uh, Halifax West is actually without one of their top players today, Ava, Ava McNutt, so... Um, they're down to eight players today, so maybe Armbray will want to try and take advantage of that. Both teams uh, played this past weekend at the at the Grammar Grammar Classic, the West uh, taking home that that title. Uh, the Ospreys falling short in the semifinal, so it should be uh, both teams should be ready to go this afternoon. As Lyric LePage takes it with her left hand, just Lucas misses it, out. and Nevaeh O'Connell. Charging up the floor to Amaya Tolliver. For two. Nice basket, nice pass from Lily Francois and Amaya down in the post to finish off that basket. Yeah, she'll be looking to get those second chance uh, opportunities and being active on the glass as Olivia Logan dials it up from downtown for three. The Ospreys have to do a better job at covering her tonight, Leslie. Yeah, and I mean, Olivia is definitely one of the top players in the province right now in high school girls basketball, so Halifax West is definitely going to be looking to go to her uh, often. Maddie Ellsmere at the top looking for Sasha, and again, Olivia active on the denial. Rob Anderson reminding shot clock, the officials. 
Yeah, we, we get we get the very best at the official table. We have the senior boys basketball team working working the table there, lads. Yeah, put, putting in, getting their money's worth out of them. <laughs> That's right, making them work hard. Two seconds, and then Vail O'Connell puts it up, but it's uh, it's way way wide on that one. And Maria Davion gives it to Lyrical Page, and setting the table for the Warriors' offensive handoff to Ali McLean to the hoop. And that's going to be a blocking call on number six, Nevaeh O'Connell. Yeah, Nevaeh actually has her hand written, uh, taped up there. So I don't know if she injured herself over the weekend, but hopefully that uh, we'll see if that has any kind of impact as we move on in the game. Well, the Ospreys are very lucky to have the services of Excel Physiotherapy. Here is a, there is a physio on site. So uh, wrapped up, hopefully not a big, big uh, detriment to Nevaeh's play. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, th th there are, there's always someone here at Osprey for a physio, and they treat both teams if needed. Um, and that's huge in the high school ranks. Like, you don't see that at a lot of gyms, so it's, um, it's definitely an asset. Absolutely, definitely. Uh, when you have two tough teams competing hard, you gotta make sure we have all the services ready to go as Madeline Ellesmere chucks up the three. Rebound there by Larrick. Again, offensive rebound by Olivia Logan. We talked about that. We gotta get her, we gotta get her off the glass. Yeah, Armbray's definitely gonna have to get a body on her and know where she's at at all times. They will set a lot of a lot of screens, or she will set a lot of screens to um, Get switched on, but whoever ends up with her still has to box her out. Sasha Dab with the miss. Warriors in transition. Logan to McLean. Back to LePage. Back to McLean. And we got too many steps in the paint. Yeah, they're really trying to move that ball around and keep Osprey um, on the move and on their toes. Time out for the Andre Osprey. All right, we got our first timeout from the Armbray Ospreys with 6.59 left of the first quarter. Again, Les, the, the Warriors offense look like they're off and running, really trying to get out in transition. Yeah, I think, I think they're going to want to try and push the ball as much as possible, being a little, little limited on the bench um, with the amount of players they have today. So if they can get out to a good lead early and build it, then that will have definitely help them out moving forward. Yeah, it looks like just a couple of the Ospreys possessions just uh, again they're getting shots kind of late in the shot clock um, ball seems to be moving but uh, definitely got to get more downhill and, and more attacks at the rim yeah Halifax West is playing playing pretty good defense on them right now like they're not getting comfortable they haven't gotten comfortable in any of their sets as of yet um, so I'm sure that Coach Jay's is trying to get them to settle down a little bit and uh, run their offense. Definitely, you can hear in the background uh, the voice of the Ospreys, uh, grade 10 Wyatt Clark. He's been uh, on the mic for every Osprey home game. Uh, and he just gave us a shout out there, Liz. Yeah, I heard that. you can hear in our headphones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to, you know, if you haven't come down to an Osprey's home game and heard Wyatt um, on the mic, anybody who's out there, you need to come down and check him out. <laughs> he is top notch. Definitely worth the price of admission. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have uh, grade 12, Lily Francois, getting it into fellow grade 12, Neve O'Connell. Coming out of the timeout, we'll see what the Ospreys have. The ball stolen there by Larrick LePage. And finishes with the layup. And that is just, that is just too, too easy for the Warriors. Great 10, Mariah Dix into the game. Yeah, but Another offensive board by the Warriors. Ali McLean cleaning up the glass. Yeah, Halifax West, they attack well into, into the key, and then they always have a kickout. They always have someone out there for a kickout. Um, so Armbray wants to you know, not worry about clutter in the middle so much to stop that penetration, but be available. Make sure someone's out there for the three-pointer. This 
inside pass by Sasha to Mariah going in with that left. Oh, scoops it up with the right. No go, and the Warriors are off and running again. Logan from downtown can't get it to go that time. And Amaya Tolliver cleans it up. Amaya attacked that hoop hard there. Missed it up, but rebound by Sasha Neal Dab. And there you go, Maya Tolliver not going east-west, finally going north-south right to the hoop, and Sasha, Sasha Dab uh, with the putback. Yeah, as, and you know, as all coaches try to tell their players, good things happen when you go uh, north-south instead of east-west, so. And Lyric LePage gets two points there. She's been very active early here, Les. Yeah, she is very active, um, especially on defense. Like, she's very, very quick on her feet. She, uh, you know, she's always in the passing lane, so they need to be aware of that. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Big charge taken by Navea O'Connell. And hopefully that charges up the Osprey's attack here, Les. I think, you know, I think if she hadn't hesitated on that one, it wouldn't look so much as a charge if she had kept just going. But she started hesitating, and then she kept going. So it really gave Nevaeh the chance to really be settled um, where she was at. Francois that'll get action with Amaya Tolliver on the left side, back up to Mariah Dix. And that's a, nice a little step. Euro step cleaned up by Amaya, Amaya Tolliver for two. Yeah, that was a nice and step. And that the cuts the Warriors Mariah. lead to five. In for Osprey, we have Peyton Phillips and Maddie Root have now come into the game. And another easy bucket by Olivia Logan. Francois to Tolliver. Driving to her right. Spin move by Mariah. Gets clogged up by the Warriors defense. And there's the swarm and the tie-up. Yeah, as and she turned her back ball. and came back around, there was absolutely nowhere for, where, for her to go. There was like four black jerseys right there. Yeah, again, early it's just reckon, uh, recognizing space within the offense, when to attack and when to give the ball up. And looking for a double stagger here from Maria Davignon on the weak side, but Allie McLean makes no mistake with that shot. Yeah, Allie doesn't think about her shots. She just gets them and she shoots. She's always in shooting position. She's always in shooting position. And she'll be that one to step in to take the charge. Allie will always be there willing to take the charge. Yeah, Allie McLean, uh, the Dartmouth native, started her uh, grade nine year at Dartmouth High and then made a huge uh, move to Halifax West last year. Now she's in second year with the Warriors. Definitely has that uh, basketball Nova Scotia resume. Um, and another bucket by the Warriors, Maria Davignon for two. Yeah, that last charge call was on Lily Francois. So let's keep a watch and see how their foul troubles. And good job on Peyton Phillips getting on the glass. Grade nine player, lots of potential. Uh, new to Arm Bray. Good yeah, length. I like what I've seen from Peyton so far this year. She always seems to be that kid that's right in the right position, the right spot. Um, you know, grade nine, of course, she has to work on her strength in that, but she always seems to be in the right spot, knows where she wants to be. So she'll be a nice player to watch moving forward. No, it's lots of potential, can run the floor quite quite well. Uh, good shooting touch, I think again, it's just getting that confidence at this level yeah. to say that uh, regardless of age or, or grade, can definitely play at this, at this level. And the Ospreys are gonna need her to contribute for sure to stop, uh, stop the likes of uh, Olivia Logan. Yes, for sure. Another offensive board right there by Logan. 
Davinia sneaks in for two, almost got her own rebound, but Sasha Dab snags it, gets it to Neve O'Connell for the charge. Halifax West is getting to the key more than once on a possession, and that's something that the Islanders gonna have to shut down. And then right, right there, Les, on, on cue, right, just being able to reverse the basketball and find open, open shots, and Sasha Dab dials it up for three, long range. And again, too easy, yeah. too easy. Nice scoop by Olivia Logan. Blown by Sasha Dab. I think Olivia has hit one three and everything else has been at the hoop. She's tacked, tacked at the hoop uh, every other possession. A little step back, Mariah off the mark. Gathered up by Davignon, and oh, a steal nice by steal. Sasha nice Dab. By Sasha. Oh. oh, she wants that one back. That was a nice steal. I think sometimes they get excited when they make a steal and they try to finish the play off the dribble as opposed to catching it first and then recomposing themselves. So next time Sasha's going to want that back to do that. Good rebound by Dix. Looking for Francois on the 45 oh, with the drive. Can't get it to go. Dab with the rebound and off the window it goes. Sasha Dab for two, cutting the Warriors lead to six. Yeah, they're, they're making a little bit of a run here, Osprey is. Settling down just a little bit more. Parker back to Davignon, up at the top. Looking to go 1v1, gets it to Logan. Logan with the spin. And that spinorama is her go-to, Les. Just putting kids in blenders and spinning them around. Yeah, that's that's Olivia's patent move. She's going to attack in the middle and then spin back the opposite way. Someone's got to be there on the weak side. Logan making the charge. Back to Ava Parker for three, and she makes no mistake with the long-distance call. That's that attack and kick out that we were talking about earlier. Like, Halifax West is just getting every possession in the paint, and they have someone waiting on the three-point line to finish off. Nice rebound by Sasha, Sasha and Dab there. And for the most part, too, Les, it's been, it's been one and done. Yes. The Ospreys will get one shot, and that's about all they're getting uh, in terms of on, getting on the glass. And the long bomb, not in there. But we got the uh, score 24 to 13, Warriors lead. And like you said, Les, uh, the Warriors offense is just up and running. And the Ospreys need to do a better job of keeping that basketball out of the paint. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, the, the Halifax West is definitely following what uh, I imagine Coach Trevor asked, wants them to do, which is attack. And if you can get to the hoop, then finish it. If not, we have more than more than one player outside the three-point line ready to shoot the ball. Um, and, and they're finding them. So um, if that was their game plan in the first quarter, it definitely was successful. And I think offensively for an Osprey, I think, you know, they, they really just have to understand where the defense is at and, and not try to just run a play through the defense um, and find some of the open players because they actually do have open players themselves, but just not, like you say, not getting downhill, not getting to the paint, not getting anybody to draw defense and, and find the open players, so. Yeah, and again, it's the, it's the dynamic duel of McLean and Logan that, that seem to be really setting the table for, for the Warriors. The Ospreys have to key on. Again, on the Osprey side, you know, with 13, 13 points, they could definitely use a, a couple more of those uh, uh, bounce, bounce outs in terms of their takes and shots. Sasha Dab uh, got a couple of putbacks, but it just, uh, again, searching for that consistent uh, offense and ball movement uh, for the Ospreys as they go into the second quarter here. Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, just having their um, post players in proper position. Um, is also going to help them out a lot more to being able to finish. Nice find there. Dab to Francois. And gathered up by Ali McLean. 
Parker to Davignon. Back to Parker on the left side. Back to the top to Logan. Davignon handed off to McLean downhill. And stolen by Naveo O'Connell. Steal. Take it to the right side. Big kick to Francois for three. In and out. Let's say, yeah, rebound there by Nevaeh. Oh, lost the ball. Nice rebound, rebound by Dab. By Sasha. Pushing the ball up the court to Nevaeh. Uh, she just called for the travel. And into the game we have Amaya Tolliver and Madeline Ellesmere checking back in the game for Mariah Dix and Peyton Phillips. Davinia with the ball. Hand off to Logan. Ball screen by McLean. Back to McLean. She dials it up and no good. Nevaeh O'Connell's running the point for Osprey, trying to get them in, in position for a successful possession. And back rim, not in. And again, you said it's a one and done thing with Osprey, like they're getting that one shot off and then that's it. Maya Tolliver to Madeline Ellesmere on the left side. Goes back to the middle, nice strong take, and she will head to the charity stripe for two. Yeah, like we were saying earlier, when you get to the middle, when you attack downhill, good things start to happen for your offensive team. Madeline Ellesmere, grade 12. Makes no mistake on the first. Again, she's, she's a player for the Ospreys, if she can she can more than capable of uh, fill up the stat sheet. Oh, most uh, definitely. And she makes no mistake on that one for two. Maddie, Maddie's that kind of player that some people forget is even on the court, and then all of a sudden you look and she just drained, you know, three trees on you. So you have to respect her being out there. And good defense there by Lily Francois, but unfortunate. Kick out of bounds. Warriors remain with the possession. Parker again back out. And there's McLean very active on the offensive board, giving the Warriors a second chance. Stolen by Tolliver. There's a turnover there. A rare turnover by Halifax West. Some contact there, but no call. Gonna play oh, on. Nicely a done. Steal by the Vale Connell. She's going to attack at Davignon. No call there. We're going to go back the other way. And Allie doesn't, uh, doesn't miss that one. She makes sure she takes care of that layup. Great take by Lily Francois, but just can't get it to go. And the one and done continue. It continues, and it, it you know you can see that it's really put them at a disadvantage of just putting that ball up and and having no one there to rebound and not really great shot selections. Sasha goes under the handoff, and Olivia o Logan just way too open for that shot. The one thing you can't do is go go underneath the screen that's set for Olivia Logan. You've got to get over top of that. You've got to hedge it really hard and make her really work. But you go underneath that screen, she's just stepping behind it and shooting it. And she um, Maria Davion gets her own rebound on that missed shot. Another O board for the Ospreys. Warriors keep on pressing here. Ellesmere up the floor and a blocking foul on number four, Ava Parker. It's 
So we have some subs by both teams. Get a couple fresh legs in. Mariah Dix and Maddie Roop are back in for Osprey. And, and Madeline Ellesmere pays her long distance bill. Downtown call there for three. And Allie McLean again sneaks in there, heading to the charity stripe for two. Foul on Mariah Dix. Packed house here at the Osprey Ness. Les, well, good to see everyone coming out and supporting high school basketball, especially for an early game, 4 p.m. Yeah, the girls' basketball um, actually is, has risen in the last few years. Like anybody that knows basketball at all just knows that it's an up game and people want to come out to the gyms and watch them support the girls, which is great. Ellesmere again. And Maddie Roop with the rebound. And gets it to Mariah Dixon. That is exactly what the Ospreys need to kickstart their offense. And Maria Dick. Mariah Dix, it's a good one. And nice little adjustment there. Naveo O'Connell guarding Olivia Logan. That'll be a different matchup. And uh, so far, so good. It's two stops in a row for the Ospreys. That's what we were talking about earlier. But when, when Olivia gets the ball, there has to be someone there because she's almost always going to spin. Um, and, so, and teammate has to be there to help out with that. And they did exactly that in that last play. And that, that's the interesting thing too, Les, is, as uh, you know very well, developing players, you know, the spin, it can be nice, but again, it kind of impedes that vision at, at, at the rim. So it's, uh, again, for, for, off, for defenses to pick up on it, uh, it's definitely, definitely there if they don't have anything else in their toolbox. Yeah, no, exactly. And I mean, Olivia's toolbox is full. She has a lot in it. 100%. That is, that is definitely um, one, of, one of her plays that she loves to go to, and she's very comfortable with it. So if, you don't, if you're not aware of it, she will uh, burn you. Oh, almost. Almost another three there, but Mariah Dix. Maddie Root providing some good pressure. Amaya Tolliver on the ball on Davignon to Schultz for three. And no go. Good rebound by Mariah Dix there. And let's see what Nevaeh's got planned for the team. Nice take by Mariah Dix. Back up to Nevaeh O'Connell for three. And Amaya Tolliver almost gets the second chance. Good to see her active on the glass. Allie McLean taking the ball up. And Olivia posting up on Neve O'Connell. And another and then, stop by the Ospreys. Yeah, Maddie Roop dropped right in there as soon as as soon as Olivia got that ball. I mean she's she she's oversized for playing against Nevea, and so she wanted to take advantage of that. But as soon as she got the ball, Maddie Roop just stepped right down to help Nevea out. And Mariah gets downhill, but a little turnover again. Logan at the top, guarded by O'Connell. Off the glass, Schultz with the rebound, another second chance by the Warriors. Yeah, no box out there, she was wide open for that rebound. Davignon to Logan for three, in and out, and, and another. another offensive chance. And Roop steal, big steal. gets it to Ellesmere, and she'll take nice. it in for two points. And the crowd likes what they see from the Ospreys. Yeah, Matt, Maddie really corralled that really nice, had it nice and tight inside and attacked with two people on her. Good job. Schultz for three, Logan and O'Connell on the ground. And Roop taking the ball up. The floor finds Mariah Dix, charging up the 45 and blocked by Davignon. She had Tolliver on the left side there. And Parker, easy two for her. Yeah, the West cut the, cut the run there a little bit, just slowed them down. And Neve on the left side. Yeah. 
Gets her own rebound to oh, nice Cousin pass. Tolliver and can't get the hoop to go. But great effort by Navea O'Connell. Great effort. She's getting it done on both ends. Really giving a good spark for the Ospreys. Yeah, just you know, really, really cool to be able to see your teammate um, that low down in the key, be able to get that ball to her. And the Warriors, I believe, are going to take a, take a timeout. Again, uh, Trevor Walter has to see or has to like what he sees so far with the Warriors is getting some second chances. Be interesting to see uh, what adjustments he makes with uh, 2.53 left in the second quarter. Well, Co Coach Jalen Skier, she made a few adjustments obviously in the last time out because the girls are actually uh, playing better defense in the paint. And so when Halifax West gets there, they're actually trying to slow them down and help pick up a little bit, which has caused some problems for the West. And, and Osprey has had two or three um, turnovers in the last few possessions. So it's, uh, it's good to see that the players are actually um, putting into play what the coaches are having um, during the timeouts. Yeah, Coach, Coach Skier in her fourth year. Uh, head coach of, of the Ospreys, joined by uh, Chelsea Slaughter, Slaughter Wright, and Ianna Eppringham. Again, really uh, great, young, knowledgeable coaching staff. Trevor Walter is uh, kind of has um, Phil Parker as the calm to Trevor's storm. <laughs> Phil Parker's been around for uh, quite a long time to, um, in, in the community, and then. Then you have Jonathan Bell, who needs no introduction uh, to the basketball community in Nova Scotia. Yeah, no, they're both both sides have great coaching staff. For sure, I'm always in, I'm always partial to uh, the all female coaching staff. So shout out to Ambre for helping to bring along some of the young coaches that are out there and help them with their development. Absolutely, Mariah Dix gets it to Ellesmere, and That's she a nice continues. Pull to find that hoop for two. That's a great decision. Just that mid-range jumper that I think Coach Yogri is lost in the game of basketball these days. Um, but that's definitely what Maddie does and does it well. Oh, and Olivia Logan going inside on Novea. Maddie Ellesmere fakes it, takes it in, almost. Sasha battling, can't get it. Good stop there by Ellesmere on McLean. McLean to Davignon. She gets middle. And an easy two for Maria Davignon. Yeah, there's no, there was no help on, on the weak side on that. Osprey missed her, missed her help on that one. And right back at her is Mariah Dix, the grade 10 guard. Cuts it to 10. She's some back and forth action here, Les. Yeah, I mean, Allie, Allie McLean is gonna go hard to the hoop every time, and if she can get by her first defender, she has very quick feet. Um, and she has a long stride, too. She doesn't just take those short strides to the hoop, so that, that long stride will definitely, a lot of times, cause a chance for, for a foul. McLean makes the first. Looking to get the second one at the charity stripe. She does. And into the game will be Amaya Tolliver checking in for Mariah Dix, who I believe has two personal fouls. So Skier has to be uh, really careful with, with her foul count. Navea yeah. O'Connell to Sasha Dab. Fakes the get, and she chucks it from long distance. Can't get it, but Francois active on the boards to Navea O'Connell for three, yeah, and she makes shot. no big mistake. Navea O'Connell with a tray ball. Offensive rebound, found the open player, nailed the three. Great defense by Navea O'Connell, looking defense. for the charge on Logan, and she's taking it up to Matty Ellesmere. Crossover to Tolliver, back to Ellesmere. Inside the dab. And maybe another one for Novea. No, she takes it with the right. Scooped up by Dab, and that's another two. Down by Sasha. And again, tacking that hoop gives your post players a, that opportunity to get those rebounds. 
But when you let those wide open trees go like that. So there's been an unsportsmanlike call on Nadea O'Connell um, on Olivia against Olivia Logan in the key. Nevaeh is holding her own pretty well with the mismatch in the post. She's guarding um, Olivia Logan in post, and that's a that's a tough call for her. And she's done pretty well about, uh, against her, but I think um, you know gets a little frustrated when she can really post to get her low. And Olivia can just post really low. And she's quite strong, so. And that will stop the, the Osprey charge there as the Warriors get it back up to 11 with 24 seconds left in the first quarter. Davinia charging in and another easy two. Nice and that unfortunately is five unanswered points by the Warriors. Yeah, which is unfortunate because Osprey was on a nice little run there making great decisions. Francois for three. And that will end the first half as the Warriors lead the Ospreys 45 to 35. Coach Les, would you like on both sides heading into the second half? Well, I like I like the fact that the Halifax West just constantly on both the whole half just kept attacking downhill, getting to the paint, and then finding an open player. And Halifax West is always shot ready, every one of their players, and, and they've done that very well. On, on the uh, Osprey side, I like the fact that they actually stayed with it. They didn't give up because they were down by about 13 early. Um, and they've started now to actually attack a little bit to the middle and, and be stronger and make better, make better decisions. Um, so they're on a little bit of run there going into the half. So hopefully they can continue that coming out. And there you have it. 10-point uh, lead from the Warriors. Myself, John Tramble with uh, Coach Leslie States on the call. We're going to take a break and stay tuned for second half action at Armbury Academy in the Osprey Nest. Thanks to your generosity, we were able to outfit our science lab with state-of-the-art microscopes. 
When we pool our resources together, we can make a significant impact on the Armbre experience for our students. All gifts, regardless of size, have the power to inspire. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Your gifts directly contribute to real, tangible change on our campus and will immediately impact all of our students. With your support, we can expand our programs and fund enhancements to our classrooms and co-curricular learning experiences. Your gift, no matter the size, can make a difference. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you.
At Armbre, the annual fund campaign is really the backbone of our fundraising efforts. That's because the projects are designed to enhance the learning of current students. So we conceive of and raise funds for the project this year, for example, and then we launch it next year. In the past, you've supported projects like smart board upgrades in classrooms, classroom furniture upgrades, playground equipment, uh, the new class set of microscopes in the science lab, and of course the new bike shelter that's being built this week. So thank you for your support of those projects. Like all independent schools, tuition fees only cover about 85% of our operating costs. So it's through the generosity of donors like yourselves that we're able to bridge that gap. This year's projects include um, musical instruments, visual art equipment, and smart board upgrades across all divisions, and of course our scholarship and bursary fund as well. In the coming weeks and months, you'll be given opportunities to support the project or projects of your choice, and I just wanted to take a moment here to thank you in advance for doing so. Thank you for your support. 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 All right, and we're back for second half action. John Trammell on the call, joined by Coach Leslie States. Warriors versus Ospreys in the Osprey Nest. Warriors have a 10-point lead, and the Ospreys are looking to eat at that lead here in the second half. That's definitely a better possession there by Osprey, the first possession in the second half. Um, they really stopped Halifax West from attacking down the middle, which is exactly what they were. Halifax West was successful last the first half, so hopefully uh, they've uh, had some conversation about that and looking to shut them down. I think the biggest thing too, Les, is, is urgency, right? The Ospreys uh, got to be a little bit more more belief in their in their game here. Is great possession, Francois to Dab for two, cutting it to an eight-point lead. Uh, as the Warriors showed zone coming out of that uh, in that first first possession. And the good thing about that position is, is, is Lily attacked the hoop and then the defense drew and then Sasha was right there, so she found it. Oh, Sasha gets her own rebound, scoops it up for two, and there you go, the Ospreys' offensive attack finally getting downhill into the paint, like you say, Les. Yeah, it looks like it looks like Osprey's come out with a little bit more pep in their step in the second half. So another easy two by Davinia to her right hand. She's been really sneaky uh, this game to complement Olivia Logan's 17 points in the first half. Yeah, Olivia Logan had her had herself in, involved in a lot of the baskets and a lot of possessions in the first half of the West. Um, and when she didn't score, she made sure she helped find some of the teammates to help them. Yeah, Allie McLean uh, started off with nine in the first half. Uh, Lyric LePage with seven for the, for the grade 10 rookie. Uh, and now on the Ospreys end, Sasha Dab had nine and uh, Madeline Ellesmere almost on cue, nine points as well. And Sasha, another two. So right there, four points for Sasha Dab to start the half. That's actually six points because she had the first basket from Lily. Then she had the next one in the middle of the key. So it's been, it's been a long day, Les. Yeah. My math Listen, is just not on, on par here. I feel your pain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running on about four hours sleep in the last 24 hours. So I feel your pain. But yeah, I mean, Osprey has definitely come out. There it is again. There it is again. When you attack like that and draw the defense, that's really good basketball. That's I don't really know. I don't basketball. know what the coaching staff, the Ospreys, said in that locker room, but definitely the spark needed to turn it on here. Great D by Neve O'Connell, and another take by Davignon and Tolliver knocks it out of bounds. Yeah, no, it, it definitely in in the first three minutes of the game, second half, it definitely looks like a different uh, Armbray Osprey team for sure. Yeah, it'll be interesting 
two, as we talked about in the first half, the Warriors are down uh, their guard, uh, Ava McNutt, who uh, definitely is an energizer bunny for that squad. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it'll be uh, just out of the reach of uh, Mariah Dix, a pass from Neve O'Connell. You know, again, a, definitely a long, long pass uh, at this point. You know, it's good to make probably the simpler pass, maybe to Lily, and then Lily hits it uh, to Mariah. Exactly, exactly. Like, you don't need to score all the points in one basket. It's one possession at a time, and as long as they're good possessions, that's what you want. Active on the old boards. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Wow. She, she must have been just... Getting some orange slices and Gatorades. Oh, another, another steal, steal there. Ah, oh, let's run with her. Here she finds her open player. But they get their own rebound. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Okay. That was a great possession, though. I mean, Osprey has really, has really picked up the tempo. Got to like they the look activity. like they're ready to play. Absolutely. And I don't know, either they fed Sasha at halftime or they didn't feed her at halftime. <laughs> but whatever it was, they got to keep doing that. Well, Mariah gives up position there defensively. Logan inside, misses it. No one helps on the glass. Yeah, they just stood and watched. Two. Everybody just stood and watched that possession. That's the thing. You, gotta, you can't have these lulls when you start making these runs. Matty Ellesmere downhill. Another rebound Another by rebound. Sasha Dab going up strong nice and she goes to the left hand going right into beast mode. Sasha is beasting out there right now. Yeah, she uh, she came to play. Olivia Logan and Dix gets it to Francois. Charging up the sideline inside. And that, that looked like will it was tipped. Be They're gonna referee's gonna confer, but that looked like it was tipped out by Halifax West. And for the Warriors, number 10, Keel Yeah, yeah, they call that, uh, so it's Armbre Ball. Sasha's trying to get her win there for a minute. Uh, but you got to keep feeding her right now while she's hungry. Oh, yes. Oh, nice pass. <sighs> ah, those are the ones you got to have. You got to yep. have those bunnies. Francois with the left going up and just wide off the glass. Lyric LePage charging down the court and that nice is take. another easy two. That's a great take by Lyric. They weren't settled and she just kept attacking right at the hoop. She's been impressive for the Warriors. Great, great pickup this season. Ellesmere off the mark. Logan to McLean. And another right hand drive. So Halifax West is coming back at uh, Osprey. They're trying to shut down that little uh, little bit Sasha, of attack Sasha, another two, just like that. If my math is correct, Les, 14. Yeah, yeah, she's, uh, and that's only been in the first five minutes of the second half, so. And again, the Warriors are able to get to the right hand, charging down the strong side. And Olivia Logan will be at the charity stripe for a possible $2 donation. And Sasha, Sasha and Dab gets a well-deserved rest. A well-deserved rest there. Peyton Phillips, grade nine, Osprey coming in for Sasha Dab. Uh, that, that was definitely a great charge, a great back and forth for both teams um, coming, out of the, coming out of the half. You know, I think good, uh, good time out here by Coach Skier, again, to hopefully recognize uh, the positive uh, charge, but also uh, to talk about the fact that the Warriors are still able to get to their strong hand on the right mm -hmm. side, and they have to really clean up the defensive end if they're going to... Uh, take the lead of this ball game yeah and I mean I think also I mean you know the like from the beginning the West is still attacking the hoop and so mm -hmm. hopefully you know the girls are realizing that they need to be in position they need to be in position to help each other and to slow Halifax West down because they're getting still easy layups 
But the second half, the, you know, Osprey looks more connected mm -hmm. than they did in the first half as a team. Yeah, that first quarter again, you know, maybe it was the nerves. First, first home opener in front of a big, big crowd, uh, but not much urgency. Whereas the Warriors just uh, picked up exactly where they left off against CPA on uh, on Saturday at the Grammar Classic, where uh, Olivia Logan had a monster of a tournament, as you said, with uh, I believe 45 points in that in that final. Yeah, she had 45 points, 21 rebounds against CPA in the uh, Grammar Classic. And then she had 31 points and 22 rebounds against Grammar in the semifinals. So she had a great weekend um, and came in here today and tr and just kept right on going. But uh, Osprey has slowed them down a little bit. So And again, to be, be successful at the, at the high school level is that, is that confidence. And uh, again, with the Warriors clicking with that chemistry, it's, uh, it's, it's a tough, tough combo with Lear wow. LePage. Wow, wow, with the save. Look at that. And then they finish with the basket. They never gave up on it. Again, Warriors come in with the press, the 1-2-2, one, two, two, and they get two points out of that. Francois to Matty Roop. And Lyric is just, just hounding her all over. Good battle here. Oh, geez, we're liking the, the no-look two-hand behind the back pass. Yeah, the aggressiveness to stay with it. Francois looking for a teammate. Gets it to Peyton Phillips. Back to Francois. Left side charges, and that is going to be a charge. She gets her forearm right into the chest of Allie McLean. And that's, that's actually the second charge on Lily Francois in this game. So she just needs to settle down and recompose herself. They don't need to panic. There's no, need, no reason for them to panic. Right now, Armbre is on a 15-11 run in the second half. So they're winning this half so far. So they're in a good position to just keep doing what they were doing at the beginning of the second half. Well done there by Neve O'Connell. Almost got a steal. McLean for three, just long. And Peyton Phillips with the rebound and receives the foul. Yeah, Peyton was battling there in the post. Sash got her breather and Coach Shaylin said, yeah, let's get her back in the game. Wes is back in man. No, actually. Ellesmere almost just wide as Davignon leads the charge, almost picked off by Neve O'Connell. Ava Parker comes back in for Halifax West. Always a three-point threat. Nice steal. Oh, back at the West. Logan with another scoop. And again, it's just got that soft touch. Yeah, I think anytime you give Olivia Logan the opportunity to even receive the ball, you're already 50% behind. And Madeline Ellesmere. Adds to her point total for another two. Logan again for three. There's box a great out box out. Who wants, who she wants gets the it. ball? <laughs> great box <laughs> open. Nobody wanted it. And Maddie oh, Ellsmere wow. again That's getting it nice going. Attack. Nice and strong. Great attack by the day one Osprey. What I like about Maddie is as she attacks, she's really, she's really strong oh, and traffic. confident. Another good stop. Armbray has made this a game, that's for sure. The crowd is into it. Staying in the moment, yeah. seizing the moment. Uh, again, though, I think that that tape on that hand kind of 
Messed yeah. up Nevaeh's handle there a little bit. She keeps rubbing at, at that. At Ava. And Davignon gets it Maria to Davignon the right again. side. Another tough, tough player. I have to say, Maria's development has definitely uh, taken off in the last uh, last year, really adding to her repertoire. Yeah, no, definitely. She's definitely seen on the court. Like, you know and she, you know that she's out there um, this year. She's uh, a big part of the Health X West offense. They have so many weapons. I mean, you know, Coach Trevor can go to um, many of his players, and they have shown that tonight. Coach Walter wanted a call on Roop there on McLean, but out of bounds, Warriors possession. McLean to Logan, back to LePage. Back to McLean in the corner, off that pin down. She goes left this time and will get the foul called in her favor. I think that would be, that's going to be Lily's third. Yeah. Allie hits the first one. Allie McLean is probably be about a 90% free throw shooter, would you agree? She steps on that line and she's pretty much automatic. Well, she's definitely one of the better shooters in the province. Yeah, for uh, sure. We, we've, seen, we've seen that time after time. And Aveo, dial up downtown, can't get it to go. Davignon leading the break to McLean on but cue, travel. but travel. Yeah, she, shift, she shuffled her feet to get in that, in that spot. But even with the shuffle of her feet, like Allie is always ready to shoot the ball. And for the Ossies, number four, Halifax West says stretch the lead a little bit back again. They're back oh up boy. nine. Yeah, going in. It was down to two at one point. Oh, a double dribble called there. Forty-nine point seven seconds left of the clock. Nine point lead for the Warriors. McLean sets the table for the Warriors offense. Davignon to LePage. Oh, nice backdoor cut with the left hand and Roop scoops it up for a rebound and stolen by Ava Parker. To LePage to McLean. Yeah, no. Um, Maddie was tangled up with Ava Parker on the sideline there, and okay. Ava just gave her a little extra love tap, and uh, Maddie ended up on the floor, so they called a flagrant foul on uh, Ava. Well, shout out here to, to Maddie Roop uh, on the line. Uh, she wasn't going to play the first half of, of the season mm -hmm. until uh, her younger sister, Hannah Roop, um, actually had an unfortunate in injury in practice. And Maddie Les, she, uh, she put on the shoes the very next game, and uh, she's, been, she's been a nice little spark uh, for, for the Ospreys here, the great grade 12 student. Yeah, I was surprised to see her in uniform today. I coached Maddie in the past, so I had a little chat with her pre-game, and... Uh, she said, if coach needs me to go, I'm good to go. So you got to love that. And being her great 12th year, I'm glad that she's been able to do that. Absolutely. <laughs> 16 seconds left. Lyric LePage. Armbray's trying to get a stop here, not to turn this into double digits going into the fourth quarter. Ooh, six seconds left on the clock. O'Connell to Dab for three, and that doesn't go in. No, nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's off, off, the, off the mark. Off the mark, and the Vea tried to get the rebound, but uh, that was a very entertaining third quarter, I must say. Absolutely. 
Yeah, both teams battling back and forth, giving the crowd a good, good show. Packed house at the nest. Ten minutes left to decide this competition with the Warriors up nine. Going into the fourth, we got to talk about Sasha Dab. Yeah, wow, that that th that third quarter, Sasha came out and she was hungry, and she meant business. I think she had 14 points and uh, one three, but the rest was all at the hoop and with, with, with an intention. Like she was out there knowing what she wanted to do. Um, sometimes Sasha has some lulls and doesn't play as strong as she possibly can, but today in that third quarter, she definitely showed um, the player that she can be. Definitely assertive and, and intentional, not, not, not dipsy doodling mm -hmm. with the ball, just absolutely looking at advantage and, and attacking, using her length, uh, getting, getting to the hoop. Um, then I'd have to say the, the spark in the third quarter for the Warriors is that Maria Davignon. Yes, yes, Maria stepped up. Um, and again, Maria was going to the hoop. She didn't have to settle for three-point shots, which she also has. Um, but she had those, she's going left-handed, she was going right-handed. Mm -hmm. um, and she was making sure that she was going hard to the hoop. So it definitely had, had an impact. I mean, um, Osprey had it down to two points. It was 49-47. Um, and then Halifax West ran on a run. So let's see what the fourth quarter has. Well, we got Neve O'Connell at the top. Gets it to Dix. The grade 10 gets it in for two. She squeezed her way through there to make that happen. Cutting it down to seven. Davignon charges down on Roop. Same thing. The same thing. Same thing. She just, she just, uh, Finished off, continued where she finished off in the third quarter. So that's something that Osprey's gonna have to try and uh, figure out. Nevaeh going left, finds Lily Francois. Off the mark, Logan to McLean. To Parker, back up to Logan, wide open for three. Gets her own rebound, and too easy for Olivia Logan, adding to her point total. Yeah, you have to know where she's at. Whoever's guarding her, you need to know where Olivia's at. Inside to Sasha. Going to her left. Yes. Off the window. So many times Sasha has that, has that opportunity and she fakes herself out of her own first shot. And another right hand by, drive yeah. by Maria Davignon. Yeah, she is cash money in there right now. Like she is really liking that spot. Parker to Davignon, going at it again. And another two points for Davignon, jeez. The third quarter was all Sasha Dab, and the fourth quarter it's all Davignon. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know, other than Olivia for that one play, I don't think anybody else on the West has touched the ball in the, in the fourth quarter but Maria. Um, and she's been successful. Again, all right hand drives yeah. there. Yeah, again, the Warriors showing just how many weapons they they have. Uh, again, missing uh, their their point guard, uh, Ava Ava McNutt. They don't but look like they're missing the no, point guard, Ava no, McNutt. No, they don't. That's for sure. No. No, I, ha I have to uh, recognize just the composure. Great, great 10 lyric LePage definitely uh, entered into that starting lineup. Looks... Again, seamless in that in that starting five, uh, but the Ospreys again just have to again close in those gaps, help help each other out on the defensive end, clean up the second chances and the right hand drives. Yeah, and they don't have to they don't have to play fast. Like this is this is fast tempo, but they don't have to play fast. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think some of the some of the players are thinking that they have to score right now. Um, forgetting that I do have full 24 seconds and I can take that to find, you know, go from a good shot to a great shot, you know. So um, we'll see if they get themselves regrouped. That timeout, Coach Coach Skier took that timeout to get them settled down. But still, er, you know, a lot of time left in this fourth quarter, but they need to uh, lock in. And that's exactly what there you want you out of a timeout. Right. Mariah Dix. That's what you want. The calm, cool, collected grade 10 getting in there for two points. 
See, and again, right Sash Sashino went down behind the screen that was set for Olivia Logan. You got to get on top of that screen. Yeah, nobody bumped that curl either. Francois along the baseline. Not sure what the plan was there. And we got a couple, player, a couple West players on the floor. Again, not a lot of off-ball movement there in the Ospreys' possession. No, everybody was standing and waiting to see what uh, Lily was going to do. Olivia Logan. She pulls the trigger on that one. Ellesmere down the lane. Whoa! Nave O'Connell tangled up with Ali McLean. A little bit of a collision there. We'll see what Manny States has on the foul count there. Okay, so the foul was on Ali McLean. And that tie up with Neve O'Connell. When the ball's loose and you have Ali and Neve going after the ball, you just pray that nobody gets hurt because they're, go <laughs> they're both going after the ball 100%. That's a tough shot, that's a tough shot again. That's not something that you need right away. You don't need that basket right away. Well, she did a good job drawing, too. She's got to find the open That's player. Right. That's right. Another tie up there. No call. Sasha. There's three on two going here. With the spin. Soft touch. Sasha Dab. Nice. nice. Adds to the point total. Cuts this into 12. And the Ospreys desperately need to get a stop. They need to get a stop right here. And Olivia Logan off the rim. Everybody's standing still. You need to get, keep, be active. You need to be active with what's going on. That's not a call you hear very often in, in basketball anymore, a three-second call. But Osprey will take it. Lily Francois on the left side. Sasha. Posting up, Francois looking for a teammate, can't, and that's gonna be five seconds there. Six minutes and 30 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Uh, Halifax West up 73-61, so the time is ticking and Armbray needs to make some stops. High ball screen there. McLean blocked by Maria. There actually was three white players right there and the ball dropped between them all and Halifax West picked it up. It's another second chance point opportunity. And it comes back again Ooh, to what you were saying about intention, nice right? The intentionality of wanting the ball. Mariah Dix for another two points. She's starting to find her groove here in the fourth quarter. There you go, she gets a steal. Oh, Lyric got it back. Two great tens battling against each other. But, all, all, but just off ball awareness there, almost, almost an easy two by the Warriors. Amaya can't get it to go. Double team, but that is gonna be a foul on Mariah. Or no, no on, on Amaya. A, on Amaya, yeah, from behind. Just two very bright futures right there with the ball. Lyric Page guarded by Mariah Dix. Yeah, it's definitely been a, a good key matchup for both teams. Two Ospreys surrounding Allie McLean and a foul. Foul on. Okay, on Nevaeh. I think that's her third foul also. And you heard it from grade 10, Wyatt Clark on the mic. The voice of the Ospreys is Trevor Walter. Head coach takes a timeout. And we got 5.19 left on the clock. 12 point lead by the Warriors. Again, the Ospreys showing some fight, but it's just that trade off back and forth baskets that's keeping that uh, 
double digit deficit. Yeah, they're not in a position to trade baskets, that's for sure. They need to get some stops and then they need to get some baskets of their own. Yeah, Skeeter going with Neve O'Connell, Sasha Dab, Lily Francois, Maya Tolliver, and grade 10, Mariah Dix. Hopefully they can get something going. Mariah Dix definitely showing some fight here in the fourth quarter, finding her confidence in her uh, rookie season in Metro High School ball. Yeah, she's a very talented, very talented player. Um, and matching up quite well with Lyric LePage's grade 10 on Halifax West side. So it's good to see the up and coming um, and what's available in the league moving forward. Um, Ombre has five grade 12s, I think, that will be moving on next year to most post-secondary. Post Halifax West only has one grade 12, so they're going to be strong again next year. Um, so. The league is going to be very exciting for the next few years for sure. McLean at the top going left. Blocked by Francois. Might have got hit in the chin. She's holding her neck there. And her chin, maybe her neck. Francois seems to be okay. And Maddie Ellesmere checking in for Sasha Dab. I, I kind of like that they didn't call that, give that call to mm. uh, Olivia going, I mean, uh, um, Allie going through the key there because a lot of times when she gets to that last 3 2 1, she sort of just leans in and throws it up. And I don't know that you, she deserves that call. That was a good no call. Nice, nice pass there by Maya Tolliver. She drives with the right and slips out of the hands. Yeah, but into Ali McLean, finds Logan and Tolliver trailing the play, knocks her down. Yeah, yeah Olivia's gonna run that floor. If she doesn't have that ball, she's gonna run the floor, so you need to get up. I, I think Sasha was out long enough for a drink of water. I'm not sure, but she's back in. Hydration is important, Les. <laughs> so, Armbray is down 13, make a 14. With 440 left, so they do have some work to do. Mariah Dix bringing up the ball on the right side. To Dab for three. Yes, she, she does make she no mistake it. of that. Dialing up for three, Sasha Dab. She definitely has that range. She can stretch the defense, and she's not afraid to shoot it. Mariah Dix getting up pressure. Right hand drive to Maria Davigno again. Second chance. No box. And I'm, I'm feeling like it's just deja vu over again, all Coach over Les. Again. It's all over again. There's no box outs, uh, especially where Maria where Maria's concerned. The steal by Lair. And just taking it right to the hoop. Taking the hoop. The, co the confidence that she has today is, is is amazing. That she's just playing like, you know, she's not even a great ten. Like she's supposed to be out there. So. Yeah, it's tough. Tough when when you have that unpredictable. Either an unpredictable shot or an unpredictable turnover definitely leads to tough transition defense. And the Warriors, with their speed, are able to just bounce right. Oh, a little bit of uh, confusion there. But figure out who was supposed to go off and who wasn't supposed to go off. 14 point lead, 340 left for the Warriors. Maria Davignon with the ball. I mean, it's not, it's not unattainable. Um, but you can see some of the Osprey are dropping their shoulders a little bit, and they got to stay focused. There's a block there by Sasha Hill on Olivia Logan. Who wants the ball more, right? Who wants the ball? That's a great pass. That's pass great by Ava Parker. That's a great pass from Ava to Larrick. In the last couple minutes, it's just that, that uh, Halifax West wants the ball more. Mm -hmm. 
they want each possession. Yeah, just uh, just an active active five where I find it could be an active two or an active three on the Osprey end where the other two or the other three just got to get back quicker and transition to stop those easy baskets. Now with 3.17 left, it's, uh, it's a tough de deficit it's, it, here. It, it's definitely getting tougher, that's for sure. Oh, the confidence you see in Halifax West playing this game in this last quarter, you don't necessarily see in Osprey right now, and it's showing. It's elevating them up um, a bit more. Halifax West is trying to spoil uh, Osprey's home opener here for the 23-24 season. Sasha Dab at the top. And that's going to be a foul right there on Logan. Foul on number 13, Olivia Logan. Okay, team foul number three. Sorry, number two. Number two, yeah. So there's a few fouls left to give. So Sasha posting up. Gets it to her right. Nice, nice scoop. Nice Going take. to work. Nice take. That just rolled over the front of the rim. So Osprey has has much work to do. They need to pick up the intensity, get some stops. McLean back to Davignon. She likes that matchup on Roop. Kicks yeah. it out to Logan for three. Ellesmere, nice box oh, out. Box out and bodies on the floor between Dab and uh, Logan. Game still going on. Ellesmere for three. Can't get it to go and LePage with the rebound. Yeah, no box outs there. No one was even around her. So she got a wide open rebound there. That's what the Warriors do very well. They're able to rebound the basketball. They're able to just get out and transition very quickly. And there you have an easy two. They move the ball really well. The team shifts and they find the open player. And there you hear Wyatt Clark, two minutes to play. Ava Parker for two. Can't get it to go. Mariah Dix with the basketball behind the back. Going up the left side. Finds Ellesmere. Who looked, at, who looked to take the shot. I and thought then, she was going to. Yeah, talked herself out of that one. She's looking for it. And too many walks too many in the park there. Too many Maddie steps. Ellesmere. Yeah, Coach Jalen is just telling her to get that ball, move it around, find that open player. What I like about the Halifax West team is they keep it simple. Yes. They, they, they don't try to be flashy. They know what their strengths are. And they just do what they do. And everybody knows their role. Right? Everybody knows their role. Constantly moving, reacting, right? Yeah. 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 Sasha Neal, Dad, um, adjusted that ball a little bit. But, but again, Lyric was wide open for that layup. And Sash just got there at the last second, but uh, you know her defender lost her on the cut, on the back cut. The pressure there. Ava Parker checks it up with one second left on the shot and clock. And Mariah Dix. One minute left. Going to her left, finds the Ve O'Connell for three, and that that's an out. Help, oh, but great nice rebound. rebound. Great yes. rebound. Oh, nice putback by Amaya Tolliver. Great rebound. Great putback. And Lyric LePage takes it in. Foul on Sasha Dab. Yeah, and, and Lyric was taking it right at Sasha. Like, she wasn't worried about her being there. Foul on number seven, Coach Skier urging her team to get up with that pressure. Mariah Dix, great game for the grade 12. She yeah. She it out. I mean, I think it's I think it's pretty even from from my my point of view. But I think you know, if you were to pick a player at a game for this game, it would either be Lyric or Maria Davignon because they definitely stepped up um, and showed out this evening. Absolutely. 
Yeah, when Sasha Dab was making that charge in the third quarter, it was Maria Davignon answering right. that, that call for the Warriors. And then the fourth quarter, Lyric decides, now it's my time and I have some opportunities, so she took on. Coach Trevor's pretty, pretty uh, excited about that block on Sasha. 16 point lead for the Warriors, Allie McLean. Bring it up, Francois. Last little 30 back seconds and forth. Good effort there by Lily Francois. Just under 30 seconds left to play in the game. West is up 86-70. Ava Parker at the top. To Davignon. Goes at oh, wow. Mabe O'Connell, and that wow. is the story of the game yes. right there. Right yes. hand drive, a nice hoop just, from the Warriors. Just backing down, and she has a really unorthodox finish on that right hand layup, too. She's not necessarily squared up to the hoop, and she sort of like flips it over the top of her head. But this game, every one of them have gone in. Yeah, Coach Skier will, uh, will drop another another play for the Ospreys again early in the season. You know, I commend Coach Skier uh, taking this time out again. Got to get those reps. You know, players have to apply what's on the board and be able to execute on the floor. Uh, so uh, we'll we'll see if the if the Ospreys can execute uh, one last look here at the hoop. But uh, the enthusiasm and Always animated, Trevor Walter very happy yes. with his Warriors squad as they've come in here a little bit under, uh, well, yes, under man, low, low, under, under man, under woman. Low, other woman, <laughs> yeah, other woman, I, thank you for correcting me on that one, Les, uh, with numbers low, um, definitely not low in terms of energy and uh, chemistry with, with, uh, with their ball movement and execution today. No, and you can, you can see the team chemistry that Halifax West have. Like, they're all locked in with each other for the amount of minutes you play, they play or don't play. Um, and everybody's willing to step up and, and, and do what they're supposed to do. So it's very easy to see that. Oh, nice pass. Oh, a good try by Amaya Tolliver. If Amaya, Maya's got at least 10, 12 points on that stat sheet, if you just can find that that touch, couple yes. more reps, more more confidence, she could be a real X factor, as she was last year at Provincials for mm -hmm. the Ospreys. Mm -hmm. I think just recognizing, you know, catch it, getting to her two feet and staying on balance when she puts those shots up. A lot of times she's off balance, and so that makes an adjustment to her shot, but. She's definitely in position to be successful. And there you have seven seconds on the clock. Ave O'Connell looking for that last shot to Matty Ellesmere from downtown. And the Warriors will take this 92-70 over the home team, the Armbray Ospreys. Again, Les, early in the season, lots of positives on, on, of both, positives. on both sides that both teams can take from this as they uh, move forward in their season. You know, the Ospreys this week will uh, take it to the road as they go into the DNA swag. Again, trying to build chemistry is, you know, missing, uh, missing five players from last year's team. Mm -hmm. um, new dynamic, but lots of positives uh, moving forward on, on the Armbray Ospreys end. Yeah, no, I don't think uh, Armbray should uh, hang their heads at all this game. I mean, they were down really early, and then they fought their way back to within two points. And every time uh, Health X West made a charge, they uh, regrouped and, and came back a little bit on their own. But... Again, like when you're as locked in as Coach Trevor has Halifax West, um, and then you have the other team that's still trying to find themselves a little bit and find their identity, it, it definitely comes out to show, you know, who actually will end up with, with the win. So, Armbray will go back and uh, they'll practice and regroup again, and Coach Jalen will have them ready for their next game. 
Absolutely. Well, the next home game where you might hear uh, Coach Les on the call, I'm not sure if I'll get the call <laughs> uh, after tonight's game, but uh, but they will play Halifax Grammar here at the Osprey Nest, and that should be a really good battle of two, uh, two talented squads. So this is John Tramble uh, on the call with Coach Les. Les, thank you very much for doing this. Uh, it was a pleasure, as always. Always a pleasure talking hoops with you. And uh, thank you very much for uh, Maritime uh, Profiles for your coverage always. And everyone, have a great night and a great week. And, and we will stay see warm. you back on the court in the future. All righty. Over and out. Your gifts directly contribute to real, tangible change on our campus and will immediately impact all of our students. With your support, we can expand our programs and fund enhancements to our classrooms and co-curricular learning experiences. Your gift, no matter the size, can make a difference. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you.